Hi guys, again, and again, and again, and again, I mean, because I just did this problem, I finished it, I explained it, beautiful explanation, everybody was clapping at the end, and then what happened, I realized I didn't click start recording, so guess what, I have to repeat the problem again, so anyway, let's do this problem, I used it uh, previously, uh, and that reminds me every time that I say that, you know, when they do the new season of series, uh, previously on Dexter, seems like that, previously on Statics, the easy way, Structures chapter, I did this problem, and we have those loads, and we have to calculate just the, cell, uh, the, the, uh, for the members, the, the moments at the end, the internal moments at the end in each one of the supports. Now, the problem is similar, however, we're including this new parameter here. The support C is settling, is sinking. What is the reason for that? I don't know. I mean, it could be errors in construction. It could be a um, lack of compaction. It could be a prescribed settlement because you knew it was gonna happen. It could be just uh, you have a clay of layer over there somewhere that is consolidating and is producing that settlement. I don't know. I don't know why is there exist and and we have to take it into account and see how that affects the the overall moments in the structure. So the first thing that we have to do, this is the problem that we just did, calculate the case done. Case are done. Okay, go back to this problem and check those cases. Second, calculate the distribution factors. Distribution factors were already explained in the previous video, so I'm not going to do that again. Third. Calculate the fixed end moments. Fixed end moments. The fixed end moments were also explained here for the case of the load. So for all of those, I just prepared these summary tables that I have from the previous problem, and we have those here. Now, what is the new, the new aspect that we want to introduce and that, that I am introducing to you in this problem? The new aspect for this problem is that now you have this part. Now you have a, a fixed end moments induced by the forces, but we also have a settlement that somehow produces also a moment, an internal moment. And if you go to the tables in the book, for example here, you can see these two ends, and this end settles an amount of delta. And that is producing a fixed moment, fixed moment at each end of 6 EI delta over L square. Now, pay attention and be careful because if you realize both moments, according to our convention, are positive if it settles in that way. And that makes sense because look, <coughs> if you are going to have, let me, let me draw it here first and then I'm going to explain it to you. So, let's say that you have this situation, this is the original the original beam, the original member, and then suddenly you this is gonna be settling here an amount of delta. Well then this is gonna this is gonna deform something like this. This is gonna be the deformed shape of that. And in order for this deformed shape to be produced, a moment in this direction and a moment in this direction are going to be either produced or applied because you can apply these two moments to, to get that settlement also but let's say that the settlement happened and then these two moments were created the value for these moments the fixed moments the fixed moments there is 6 EI delta over L square look this is the member if I want to get this, or if I settle this, let's say, but they are they are fixed support, look what happened. I have to force this in this way, you see, meaning positive moment, and then in this case, I have to force it in this way, like that, in order to produce that. This is positive, and when I force it in this way here, what I'm doing also is applying a moment in this direction also. So I'm applying 
this positive moment in this case and this positive moment in this case. Well, I'm not applying it, but it's being produced because of that. Now, when you do that, that tells me and uh, this is B and this is C. For this end, this is happening. So the fixed end moment BC due to settlement has to be equal to the or is equal to the fixed end moment CB. And if you put this here, all the values, that's going to be 131.25 kilonewton meter. Now just be careful when you do that, right? You have this 70 gigapascal. Well, you multiply this and times to the 9. Here, times to 10 to the 9 to, to make it pascal. Now this one here, you have to divide this by, you put, you put here I, which is this value, but then divide it to a thousand to the fourth to make it meter to the fourth. And delta is in millimeters, so you have to divide this by 1,000 to make it meters. And this one, you keep it the way it is. Now, the result is going to be in newtons. If you want the result in kilonewton, divide it by 1,000. I'm just describing the process to you, but I'm not going to do it. I'm tired of doing this, the same approach here. Now, for the other case, which is CE, then this is the original member, like that. This is C and this is E. But now the settlement, of course, happens at this end, at C. And this is the settlement happening here, delta. So the beam is going to deform like that. And then in order for this to happen, or this is creating this type of moment, which is, according to our convention, negative. And that moment, fixed moment, CE, is going to be equal to the fixed end moment EC, and it's the same value but negative kilonewton meter. You can look for this in the in the tables in the back of the book, and you can practice and you can do it. So, what is the implication of that? The implication of that is that now we have to add or subtract accordingly, algebraically. I'm talking about these values to the fixed end moments that we calculated before. Here, the settlement is not doing anything, AB or BA, nothing whatsoever. However, BC, we have this value, 131.25. CB is the same value, 131.25, 131.25. Now, for CE and EC, I have negative 131.25. And that gives us some totals here. Two thirty seven point ninety two, twenty four point fifty eight, seventy one point twenty five, and negative one ninety one point twenty five. And now we're ready to start our balancing, unbalancing, locking, unlocking process. So when we do, same thing as we did before. <coughs> the distribution factors, well, this is a fixed support. Distribution factor here is zero. And for the rest, this is zero also. And we calculated the rest at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now the fixed moment, the fixed moments are going to be this one here, 106.6, negative 106.6, negative 71.25, and negative 191.25. Now the procedure is the same procedure. Most unbalanced joint that is not locked. Okay? So if it's fixed support, you know those fixed supports are like some of your friends. They absorb everything that you give them, but they don't give anything back to you. 
So it's like that. These these are like that. Now we have to look for the Mosson balance. This is like what? 46 ish, something like that, of difference negative. And this one here is 100 and something. So the Mosson balance uh, joint for starting this is B. And when you subtract this and this, that joint B needs negative 131.25 in order to be balanced. That's what it needs. Negative 131.25. That negative 1.21 is going to be distributed according to the distribution factor. So I have to multiply this by 0.5, and I have to multiply this by 0.5. And that will give us negative 65.63, negative 65.63. Now this is log, or is balanced, let's say. Now what do we do? This part transmit half to this side. And that half is 38.81, negative 32.81. And this transmit half to this side, which is negative 32.81. This is the called the transmission factor or the carryover factor. Uh, and now we repeat. We look for the Mosson balance joint that is not fixed. Well, obviously, this is already locked. The others are fixed. So this is going to be the one. And the joint C needs whatever these values are. I don't know what the values are. 24.58 minus 32.81 minus 71.25. It needs a positive 79.48. Needs positive 71.49.48. Yes. This 79.48 have to be multiplied by the two transmission factors and that's going to give us positive 39.74 and positive 39.74 which is going to lock and balance this joint. What happened with this? Half is transmitted this way 19.87 and half is transmitted to your selfish friend here 19.87 Look for the new joint to balance. It will be B. And B needs negative 19.87, which is going to be the negative 0.27 is going to be distributed according to the stiffness of the members. So multiply by 0.5 here and 0.5 here. Negative 9.93, negative 9.93. Locked. Half to this side, negative 4.97. Half to the other selfish here, negative 4.97. Look for the new one to balance, which is C. It needs positive 4.97. That's what it needs. Multiply by 0.5, multiply by 0.5. That's going to be uh, 2.48. Locked or balanced, transmit 1.24, 1.24, join B again, needs negative 1.24. That negative 1.24 is going to be multiplied by this negative 0 .6, 0 0.62, negative 0 0.62, locked, half, negative 0 0.31, negative 0 0.31. Look for the unbalancing again. This is going to be the joint C. Needs negative 0 0.31. Needs positive 0 0.31. Half and half. Remember, half and half is the distribution factor. We are going to see in the other problems. These are the same only because the inertias are the same and the length are the same. Just be careful. It's not all the time half and half. So this value is positive uh, 0 0.155, 0 0.155. Locked half 0 0.08 0 0.08 and when when are we gonna be finishing this? Until when? Well, you know, until you feel until in my case until my OCD tells me to stop, which if I let it you know run wild it will be never. But then like every good thing it has to have an end. 
So, and I think that this is a this is a pretty close end. I can still transmit if I want to negative 0 0.02 and negative 0 0.02 and try to balance this with 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. And, but that, that, that's going to be ridiculous if I keep going and going and going and going and going. So the fifth step is what? Add columns. In other words, determine internal moments. How? Well, summation, 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 summation. So when we add all of these, here we're gonna get 68.6 when we add this negative 182.9 182.9 this is gonna be 28.9 this is gonna be I don't know I just put it like that I took it for granted but I never checked it so let me check it 0.74 plus 2.48 plus 0.155 plus 0.01 yes yep negative 28.9 negative 28.9 and this one here was negative 170.06 let's say 0.1 negative 170.1 and now we're done we calculated the end force members now how do we calculate the reactions and proceed to do the shear and moment diagram well, it's the same thing. You, if you have already the the supports, you already have these. You already have these forces here. The external forces. 20. 20. And then you put your moments. What moments? The moments that we calculated. This is a positive moment according to our convention. This is a negative moment according to our convention. Now this one here is positive moment. Oh, look at that, positive. You know, a bunch of people when they they come to this end, they start positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive, negative. No, pay attention. Positive, positive moment, negative moment, negative, a negative moment again, negative moment. And <coughs> you have your reactions, or not your reactions, your shear right there then you can do calculate this here how summation of moments here for example if you do summation of moments here it's going to be this negative this negative this 60 times 4 negative plus this value multiplied by a equals 0 so for that value which at the same time that is ey summation of forces in y will give you this repeat summation of moments here in this span positive 182 positive 28.9 negative 20 times 8 that's the, the force here times 4 plus 8 times this solve for this and that will give you this value now once you have these two values if you study the support c here this and this are these two forces which you already know and these two forces if you add them it's going to be CY. Keep going. Go to this point. You already know this. Summation of forces gives you this. Summation of moments here is going to give you that. Once you come here, once again, you have this. These two forces are here. This is going to be BY. And this value you already know, I remember, because that value here, the reaction EY, is going to be equal to whatever value you got here yeah I know it's going the same way of course they go in the same way because if you have the fixed support here it's gonna be transmitted like that and here it's gonna be transmitted like that so same situation that happens here and once you have these two you can do summation of forces in Y if you want in the overall or you can do summation of forces in Y here and then you can calculate your reaction a Y and you don't have anything in X and once you have that proceed share moment diagram yada 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 now you, please, I challenge you. I dare you to tell me that this is not cool. This is the coolest thing that you could have found when you do this type of situations and you are gonna do it by hand. Imagine 
this if you can imagine the world in black and white imagine this in 1924-ish and Hardy Cross coming with this method amazing method when people have to solve a bunch of system of equations in the slow deflection which is awesome by the way or they have to work with five six seven pages to do the same problem using the force method now this guy comes using this approach one page no time no complicated math behind it and you can get real results because the results are going to be as real as you keep the error here I love this method guys and I love you be cool stay safe keep watching